Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. So some of his disciples said one to another, What is this that he says to us, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered him, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Lester Stano. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. As I read the words of today's text, I kept hearing in my mind the words of the song, I Never Promised You a Rose Garden, as sung by Lynn Anderson in 1970. Anderson herself said, I believe that Rose Garden was released at just the right time. The message is in the song that you just take hold of life and go ahead. You can make something out of nothing. People just took to that. The chorus of the song goes, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain sometime. Our text states in verses 19 to 22, Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, A little while and you will see not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and no one will take your joy from you. I beg your pardon. I promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine... There's got to be a little rain. The disciples have heard about the promised counselor, the spirit of truth, but they cannot comprehend what is yet to come. The days ahead will tear them apart. 
They will watch their Savior be handed over to the religious and civil authorities, be beaten, crucified, and laid in the tomb. They will hide in fear for their own lives. Their world, it seems, is not only devastated, but over. All hope is gone. They will not remember his words in verses 32 and 33. The hour is coming, indeed has come, when you will be scattered every man to his own home. And you will not be, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said this to you that you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome it. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain. Many of us are no different than the disciples when they heard these words of promise. Over the 40-plus years of ministry I have served the Lord and his people, I have heard too often in personal lives, in battles with illnesses, especially battles with disease like cancer, or in the prolonged or sudden death of a loved one, why God? We also live in a post-Christian era. Our world and our society are no longer what many of us came to know as we grew up in our culture. In many ways, we live in the times of the disciples. Oh, yes, we have many more sophisticated blessings and technology in our medical and in our world that we live in. And many of those were even unheard of in the last century. But what Jesus said to his disciples, he says to us again, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. Could it be that we have lost the vision of what Jesus was warning his disciples then and now? that life as one of his followers was never meant to be easy? We read in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. He was on the prowl with the disciples and still is with us. I firmly believe that the disciples thought they had made it. They had found the one, and life was now set. They did not sign up for a cross. What makes us think we are any better? Long ago, I was reminded by a faithful Christian that when moments occur that we leave us speechless and many times asking why, the real question we need to ask is, why not? I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Along with the sunshine, there's got to be a little rain. Our challenge in our personal lives, as well as the society and world we live in and have our being, with all their imperfectness and anger against God and his word, is for us to remain calm and steadfast. Instead of trying to justify our personal trials or change the world and society into the misconception of the disciples, a kingdom established here without any trials or tribulations, we need to hear Jesus' loving words to take up our cross and follow him. It's true. He never promised a rose garden, but he has promised us that he will hear us be with us and give us, through the Holy Spirit, that peace which would beyond all human understanding. Hear him again. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. <laughs> 